Now, let's look at some of the midterm budget highlights. So, uh, firstly, as we discussed, more revenue than expected, about 85 billion rand more uh, than was projected was collected by SARS. So the finance minister is saying this will help weather the storm. Uh, it will go on things like infrastructure, uh, spending on priorities like health and stabilizing the debt. Now, this could be controversial. A 3% salary hike for public servants. So basically, government saying that this will will be implemented. This is an old offer. It was a tentative agreement, although workers were not happy with that. And now uh, public sector workers are back at 10%. So with the finance minister saying this will be backdated, it'll be on people's pay slips. Uh, we'll see how that plays out and we'll chat to the unions a little bit later on. And of course, the Public Servants Association served government with a seven day strike notice on Monday already. E-tolls are gone. This issue is finally uh, resolved after years and years. Government will give Gauteng nearly 24 billion. Uh, that'll cover 70% of the ETOL debt and Gauteng will cover the rest, uh, saying this has go gone on for seven years. The 350 Rand uh, Social Relief of Distress uh, grant is extended for another year. So no resolution on a basic income grant, uh, something that many have called for something more tangible and permanent. And uh, then finally, government announcing it will take on a portion of ESCOM's 400 billion rand debt, but we'll only get the details next year. All right, uh, let's bring you uh, also the budget deficit. That's important because remember the, the debt burden has been a huge issue for government. It's really trying to stabilize debt, so it wants to bring this down. Uh, the deficit, the difference between what's coming in and going out, we're spending more than we're getting. So basically this has to be funded by debt. Uh, but government's saying we could head towards a surplus. We're, we're stabilizing um, even in the next year if things go well. So let's see how this has all been received. I'm joined now by Dr. Lumkile Monti um, from WITS, economist and senior lecturer there. Uh, Tuto Masasa, BDO Advisory Services Head. Great to have you with us again. And Owen Nkomo, also um, a regular on the show in Kunzi in Kunzi Wealth Group uh, Director. Let, let me start with you, Owen, because the RAND looks stronger. Uh, is, is that a reaction to the midterm budget, or is it all about the dollar, or is it a mix? Look, I think it will be a mix because yesterday already the currency was uh, trading in, a, in, a, in an upward direction against the U.S. dollar. Uh, some of the major markets' currencies are also stronger on the day. But um, I do think that to an extent people are welcoming this, uh, this delivery by Mr. Kodongon today, which I think has got a, quite a lot of differences from what we've seen in the past in terms of our big intentions, big decisions yeah. and consistency around our fiscal prudence. So, so what is good for you then? Well, look, I think uh, this, the big one obviously is ESCOM. Uh, unfortunately, the timing there hasn't been mentioned. The government is still trying to, uh, or rather the National Treasury is still trying to figure out how they're going to check up this uh, one-third to two-thirds of ESCOM's debt, which is about 400 odd billion rands. They're going to take that onto the national uh, balance sheet, uh, even if they are still trying to work out how that will be done and what sort of uh, mechanisms will be used. I think the one thing that the markets will be happy about is that the government seems to be interested in making sure that it attaches conditions to that uh, to this relief in quotation marks on uh, the, 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 uh, on the ESCOM debt that the government is looking to reduce. And again, ESCOM is the most important thing in my humble view in the country for the development and the growth of the economy. We should be able to, should we implement this uh, reduction in ESCOM's debt and we take it to the balance sheet of the government, I think we should be able to attract foreign investors. And um, obviously the biggest challenge there, like we discussed earlier, is this issue of uh, the negotiations between the government and the public sector. We've got inflation as high as 7.5%. hasn't been there in a very long time. And uh, the economy is not growing. Projections for the growth of the economy have been dropped down to 1.9%. So I think it's really uh, difficult to see how that one is going to pan out. But uh, the government has sort of forcibly instituted the 3% uh, yeah. that's agreed, as we mentioned earlier. Well, well, we'll find out if the strike is going to go ahead, uh, the way the PSA was talking earlier. It sounds like it will. And then there's the economic damage of, of another very widespread strike. Um, Tuto, what's, what stood out for you, your, your overall um, reactions to, to what was said today? Sure. I think, uh, you know, I try to wear my hat as a CFO of the country, you know, delivering half-year results. And um, I just look back, it has been a tough environment, uh, firstly, for the CFO of this country. 
and, um, and and looking at what he's delivered today in terms of you know what to look for for the next six months um, I think it's a fair uh, you know delivery uh, ESCOM uh, being critical I think it's been mentioned already Transnet as well I mean we need that stabilized and uh, yeah. you so know Transnet got 2.9 billion yeah um, does that sound significant Although rebuilding Parliament also two two billion, I, I was interested that those amounts are, are similar. Look, there is much more that's needed for Transnet. Uh, however, it's a step in the right direction, nonetheless. Uh, you know, kind of getting back their locomotives that were non-productive back on. Uh, I mean, we've seen how the mining sector has been decimated just by the you know the lack of I guess movement outside of efficiencies that uh, we've got in our ports and uh, overall just a real network uh, so look it is step in the right direction it's not enough mm. but it's step in the right direction so I think those two uh, for me are critical and we also welcome I guess um, kind of maybe unlocking the procurement elements around uh, infrastructure kind of uh, you know getting back uh, the actual procurement into departments and also uh, the provinces. Um, hopefully we'll see some kind of movements because that is a little bit slow, uh, somewhat, yeah. uh, to kind of keep a little bit of a kick into, into the economy to create a bit more jobs. Yeah, if I heard correctly, mm. um, public sector sort of infrastructural uh, spend has gone down when, yes. when the whole uh, idea of all the economic plans we're presented with exactly. is infrastructure, um, you know, building this in environment, building South Africa. Uh, Lumkile. So uh, the message is very clear. Uh, it reminded me, in fact, today uh, of Trevor Manuel uh, in 1996. Uh, the focus really is uh, consolidation. You consolidate your, your debt uh, with the idea that you're running away over time to crowd out private sector because the state has got so much debt. Therefore, um, private sector is pushed to take a lot of the state debt. And the investment, as we know, has been very poor. So a lot of, the, a lot of that debt didn't give us the necessary asset base that we wanted to. So uh, it's encouraging that he stayed on consolidation. But more important also, that consolidation over time will lead to a primary surplus. So uh, I think, uh, to one's point, I think a lot of that message is, is extremely important for yeah. financial markets, that you know we are moving correctly. Uh, and over time, as you consolidate the debt, so your interest payments go down. So over time, we are creating um, uh, some key for fixed investment. So it's understandable why they can't, because there's not money to invest on fixed capital formation. But if you consolidate and they can withstand it, at least for the next two years, yeah. with SARS continuing to continue, continue to collect more revenues, we should have our debt much lower and, there are, and thereafter be ready to really massify on investment, because this economy requires investment across many areas, from energy, from rail uh, to roads, but more important also to telecoms, because we're, we have not finished the process uh, of, uh, de of, of deregulating uh, telecoms. Our cost, uh, our data cost, our telephone cost are still very, very high. And yeah. we need the, those reforms uh, taking place. And, and we're still waiting for the analog uh, switch off to be off. announced. Uh, we, we're years beyond the, the global deadline. Uh, very quickly, what would you say to uh, pro poor lobbyists the, who say the, what you're talking about? Yes, no, no, but let me finish because. Uh, what, what you're talking about, they would call austerity, where yeah. we think about balancing the books, getting our debt down, but we're not spending, we're not increasing that social relief of distress grant. Uh, many would say it's, it's, it's too low. It's, it's not even near the poverty line. So we're not doing things like that. We're prioritizing the debt. Why do you think that works? Well, the small business have, have already been shuttered. They are shuttered by lockdown and COVID. Mm. They've been shuttered by ESCOM. Secondly, jobs thousands and thousands of jobs, uh, jobs have been destroyed. So for the fact that our government is willing to extend uh, the 350 over to, uh, with another year, it signifies the commitment uh, to, 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 uh, to, uh, to many South Africans to ensure that at least they can have some form of income. 
uh, what we understand is that uh, going forward, uh, both the Social Development Department and the Treasury will work out a, a much more implement, implementable plan, which probably will see us big uh, coming around uh, 2024. However, I'll worry, I'll caution that, given that this will be a significant political uh, calendar for many South Africans, and therefore it, may be, it might be seen as a political business cycle where people are, are being uh, promised a big uh, in return for vote for the ANC. Yeah. Yeah, interesting view. Um, Owen, what's, what's your stance on this, uh, the, the whole debt issue? Uh, we're in junk status as far as the, the big rating agencies are concerned, and it's all about our debt, our ability to pay back. Um, if we head towards a surplus, if we stabilise finally, um, is, is that great news for, for South Africa? Yeah, it is great, and I think that you are most likely are going to see some of the ratings agencies coming out uh, with the thumbs ups on the budget. You know, we needed to, yeah, to But to we stop. won't come out of junk. We'll no, just start we, moving know, we'll start up again. No, we'll move up yeah. to stable, etc. But I think what's important is if you control the escalation of the national debt to GDP ratio, I think that's a positive. And if you start showing that you want to do something about the state-owned enterprises, at least from their financial stability perspective, that is a very big positive. And if you say in your speech, as Minister Kodogona today, that you want to start allowing the private sector to also participate in the rail uh, infrastructure in terms of guys putting their own um, um, trucks, not trucks necessarily, but the carriages and the heads on, yeah. onto Transnet, that is positive because you're then transferring the state's responsibility of putting up that infrastructure into the private sector, which is a bigger agency for making sure that their exports can reach the shores. It's quite great. And we've got uh, an estimation as well of uh, um, you know, a surplus on the budget for the next two years as well, uh, given the $85 billion that we've just raised now. If we're going to do that over the next two years and if it's going to continue to be used to help the government deal with the, with the debt matter, I think it's very important. But one thing that uh, Minister Kodongan has said as well in his speech today, uh, which I resonate with, is that we should try as best as possible to, to stay away from creating a social welfare state and making that sustainable. Mm. You know, I think, I think we cannot afford to have more people depending on, on the government for, for handouts. For example, the, the um, COVID relief fund is over 7 million people that are receiving that. And there's probably about 17 odd million people that are surviving on uh, government support. Instead, you need to create an economy, which is said once again, an economy that creates an environment where business can create jobs. You need to start creating that shift, drive the economy to create jobs through incentives, through making sure that uh, you know, your state-owned enterprises that deal with the private sector are actually better managed in terms of finances. You know, and the procurement yeah. side of things also is extremely important. You know, we need to weed out the corruption there and make sure that we don't sit on billions and billions of rands that should be put into infrastructure and those projects are not rolling out. State because capture focused on procurement. Yes. That, that's where the looting happened at, at state-owned entities. Absolutely. Mm. So it's quite important, uh, Francis, that the government deals with corruption because the money is there. But for the projects to start rolling, you know, there must be conversations behind closed doors that have been for many, many months and we end up losing out on, uh, on opportunities there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Tuta, do you agree with me that he was quite frank, saying the logistics sector is in crisis? So, so we yeah. have to fix rail now. Yeah. Um, and we have to fix ESCOM. He, he spoke about the risk of load shedding. Yeah. But is it good enough after all this time, after the, the ESCOM's debt has been this hot potato that has been um, sort of, you know, carried for, for many years, it's deferred till, till next year, although he is saying it'll be big enough to ensure sure. the sustainability of ESCOM. Look, it's positive in a sense that at least we've got a deadline now. You know, we know yeah. that there is a team that's Maybe. going to basically yeah, look at, uh, you know, the how in terms of restructuring this particular debt. And at least as South African, we will know a way forward. You know, now what and how we're going to look at uh, ESCOM's debt. So I think it's positive. Uh, we can draw a deadline and um, perhaps, yeah, on the rail network, I think there we, st we still have a lot of work to do, uh, uh, Francis, and this is really, really putting a lot of burden on the economy, you know, and yeah. Owen refers to, I mean, the top line, which is then the revenue uh, section that is really the critical one. And if we can unlock that, particularly in the various sectors for mining, manufacturing, I mean, we'll start to see the wheels turn, in my view. Yeah you know, coupled with Things SMEs. could be even yeah. better than they are now. I mean, Absolutely. we're bringing in more revenue. Imagine the, the rail system was working efficiently. It would have been much better. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, Lumkile, let, let me end with you and another one of the big economic 
debate is whether our public sector wage bill is bloated or not. Um, many argue we need well-paid teachers, nurses. The, these are the people that are critical to the functioning of the economy. There are many um, jobs not filled. Or do we say, no, let's, let's streamline where we can. Um, where do you sit on, on that debate? Because this is the issue that's still going to play out around that 3% uh, wage increase. Well, I, mean, I, mean, I think the size of the public sector is debatable. I think given uh, the, the positive impact that the size has on various households, because there are these uh, individuals uh, who are supporting a multitude of households. Therefore, if the state can afford it, as it's doing at the moment, I don't have an issue in that. So the issues around the efficiency for the South African public, uh, do they deliver uh, the services that were support, that expect of them? So whether it's schools, do teachers come on time and deliver good education, uh, nurses, or even the licensing department and others. So that's really for me where the debate should be, not about the size. The size, if you can yeah. afford it, I, I don't mind. Yeah, don't maybe the problem is everybody's lumped together. We're not saying let's look at the condition of nurses specifically and how are they benchmarked against the rest of the world, for example. Well, it's, that might be the problem, but, but until government uh, holds them to account, because the performance management system does not exist. Therefore, we as the public continue receiving poor services. But in other departments, you go in there, you get extant service. So the unevenness of service and what people experience uh, needs to be, uh, to be addressed. Just a last point relating to what, uh, what's been raised by Tato around transit and others. The key for me in the budget is the investment on safety and security mm. because a lot of the damage that is everywhere whether it's procurement that Owen is talking about is to do with the nature of how we in our police service we gather uh, intelligence how do we uh, preempt pre any destruction of infrastructure and whether is it part of a plan among the political um, appointees within our government all those issues need to be uh, addressed and i'm very happy that he's putting more money there mm. they, they, what you're going to see yesterday Padoy talk about it mm. let's see whether Padoy and that team are going to deliver and deliver big time yeah mm. Mm. all right well i'm glad that um, all three of you can agree this was a good news budget um, but let's get some reaction from people on the ground remember the the issues that count for many people are load shedding um, the issues that count are service delivery and uh, things like that Bongiwe um, first let me say thank you very much uh, to Dr Lumkile Mondi from WITS to Thomas Sasa from BDO Owen Nkunzi um, from Nkunzi uh, Owen Nkoma from Nkunzi well mm -hmm. thank you very much